Welcome to the program. This is Pastor Silver Mudley. And I'm Pastor Jesse Mudley. You're watching Your Miracle Moment. We have a powerful message about five types of love mentioned in the Bible. And the one that is most important for a Christian is her seed love. It is even superior to agape love. So on the series, you're going to find out what our seed love is, how it impacts your life, how to tap into it, and how to transform your life and everything that the covenant has operating in your life. Amen. So let's go into the message right now. Love goes deeper than all that. Amen. Now, we're talking about love and we're understanding God's view on love. Amen. So the English language is often a, 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 a not a very strong language when it comes to Hebrew and Greek. Yes. There's much more words in Greek, much more words in Hebrew. Yes. And so we have a limited vocabulary if you only speak English. Amen. If you spoke Greek <laughs> or even Hebrew, your vocabulary will be much more bigger than what it is right now. We have so few words in the English language. We have too few words. So the concepts and the understanding is very limited, mm -hmm. right? So if you're English speaking, you have a limited, um, a limited ability to communicate and understand things because the English language is a, is a limited language. Amen. It's a limited language. Now, I know some of you are saying, but I speak English all the time. Well, it's great language. I mean, I speak English all the time as well. Okay, but, but there is limitations to, being, to speaking English. There's limitations. Because the word love in the, in the Greek, Greek yes. in the Greek, has four different meanings in the English language. Right? Four different meanings. So the first word, and even in those four meanings, one of the meanings has a spin-off to another completely different meaning. Mm. So wow. we're going to study that for a second as we get into these views that God has about love. Amen. So the first word that all of us know is eros, right? Eros. And uh, it refers to physical love, physical love. Now, Jesse, the Bible talks about not... Awakening love before its time. Amen. And that would be eros love. Eros love, right? Mm. So God says very clearly in his word, do not awaken Eros love before it's time. What does he mean by that? You see, Satan through Hollywood shows us movies where little kids, 10 years, 12 years. Yes, even younger now. Younger than that, are falling in love and are making out, going on dates. And, and the problem with that is, according to the Bible, you're awakening love before, before it's, it's time. time. Yes. So you're awakening Eros love. Wow. You know, sometimes uh, I ask people as a pastor, I say to them, how's your children doing? And then they say, well, let me show you pictures of my children. I say, great, let me see them. And then they take out their cell phone and they show me pictures of their children making out with someone. I mean, <laughs> now, I'm not comfortable with those pictures. No, right? not at all. We I don't find, find it cute. cute. <laughs> I don't find it cute, right? Where you show me pictures of your daughter French kissing someone and say, oh, look at this picture. I got it on my DP. I find that disturbing, very disturbing. Amen. And, and especially when they are young, because the Bible says, mm. do not awaken love before it's time, right? Yes, uh, and sometimes parents, they want to be relevant, they want to be modern, and they want to impress their children. You know, we encourage you to rather be godly parents, yes. follow the word of God, because that's what God leave, wants us to teach do. Teach your children godly principles. So you, therefore, you leave a godly inheritance for them. Amen? Yes. Don't follow the circular world. Don't follow what you see in the movies. Don't follow what you see in, uh, what you read in magazines mm. and some thrash out there. Follow and what you read on social media. Follow the principles in the word. Keep to the values that God teaches us to instill in our family. Amen? Uh, this is the reason why in so many churches, 
People's lives and families are so messed up. Children and parents are messed up. I mean, uh, and, and, and horrible things are happening. Why? Because somewhere we stopped teaching our children values, the yes. correct values. This is what happened to Israel. You know, the book of Judges exists for one reason. You know, you know where all the judges, like for example, Samson, Samson give me another one. Deborah. Deborah. Uh, oh, there's a host of them. Right? You read the book of Judges, right? You know why that book exists? God told the parents, teach your children godly values. Mm. So the parents did it, and there was the blessing of God over that nation, over that family, over that nation. Then some parents forgot to teach their children godly values. When this happened, the children walked away from God and got into Satan's hands. Mm -hmm. you know, the Bible says, bring up a child. In the way he should go, in the word of God. Right. And they won't depart from it when they're they older. older. Right. Mm. But if you neglect to do that, which is what the Israelites did, yes. then the children all backslid and, and the curse came over Israel. Yeah. So to fix the problem, God had to raise up a certain type of man or woman. He called them judges. When these judges were risen up, they restored family values. That's what they did. They brought the family back to God, back to God, away from the circular thinking, away from, the, from social media, away from Hollywood or Bollywood or Nollywood, whatever you call it, right? They took them back to God, to the Word of God. And, and, and every time the judges came, the blessing returned. Yes. Uh, the and favor returned to that family. Back, yes. But the moment they turned circular again, they tried to impress their children, mm. they tried to be more modern and circular, they messed up their family line. And that, and go read the book of Judges, you'll see it's, the judges are there because parents did not do what God asked them to do. So we must instill family values, godly values. You teach a child the right value system when they are old, they follow that value system. Amen? And I know many godly parents out there watching me right now, you're saying, Pastor, that's me. We're doing that and praise God for that. Mm. So if you want to leave an inheritance for your children, it's a set of good values to live by. That's the best inheritance you can give your child, a set of godly values to live by. You know, uh, uh, Dr. Fred Roberts, some of you will remember him. He was the pastor of uh, and the founder of Durban Christian Center. Yes. So he was a good friend of mine, and he told me once that when his daughter and um, his daughter and his uh, future son-in-law son were, were dating, and you know, and they uh, they were going to get married in the future, he would let him come. He would let the son-in-law come in, the future mm. son-in-law come in, and he would say to them, right. You guys sit on the couch. Daughter, you sit on that end of the couch and you sit on that end of the Across couch. The room. Right? No touching, no hugging, no falling on top of one another. You sit there, you sit there. And even though they were adults, mm. if you go out, you have to go with a chaperone. Amen? And he said that's how he brought his children up. And guess what? Both those daughters mm. are in the full-time ministry. Yes, right? amen. Running big mega churches, mm. powerful ministries because the value system he put into his children. He's with the Lord right yeah. now. The legacy that he started and the godly values he instilled in them is uh, being propagated in every in, in their teaching yeah. and, and how they are uh, in the church right now. You Amen. know, they're keeping Amen. that legacy alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's go on. Uh, so, uh, Paul says, if you can't control Eros' love, and I'm going to talk about how Eros' love is so dominant today on the earth. Why people are getting into fornication, getting into adultery, mm. uh, uh, why people are tormented by lustful dreams, and, and why people are having uh, uh, lustful thoughts and they're struggling with these things. I'm going to show you why that happens. It's in the Bible. The Bible says, Paul says, if you can't control Eros' love, then rather get married quickly. <laughs> Amen. Of, it said, that's you what he says. Instead of, burning, <laughs> instead of burning and then falling into sin, get married quickly. That's what he says here, mm. right? I know somebody could say, Pastor, I'm going to take that scripture to my parents because I want to get married soon. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> right. So sometimes people say to me, Pastor, please pray for me. I'm suffering with lust. Mm. I'm suffering with lustful dreams. I'm suffering uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, these thoughts that are not right thoughts. They're lustful thoughts. And the first thing I tell them, or the first thing I ask them is, what do you spend most of your time on? Um, mm, well, are you watching soapies? 
Are you reading the wrong magazines, maybe pornographic adult magazines? Mm -hmm. Are you watching movies you shouldn't be watching? Are you on inappropriate internet sites that you should not be in? Right? You see, soapies? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm going to teach this in one of the come, upcoming sessions. But the Bible tells us there are 16 different strongmen. And, and I'm going to teach you each of these strongmen and which areas of your life they impact. Mm. But there's a strongman called whoredom. And whoredom is the strongman over prostitution, uh, adultery, adultery, fornication, fornication. Uh, mm. lust, mm. and soapies. Soapies. That's right. Soap. You heard me correctly. Soapies, right? Not the soap you wash yourself with. I'm talking about this drama on TV. The soapies. Uh, whoredom is the same demon that's over soapies. And why is it the demon over soapies? Because why? Well, the strong man, whoredom, activates the, the spirit of lust over you. Yeah, yeah. So when you watch it, you bring yourself under that yeah. spirit of lust. So the purpose of soapies, and while somebody is watching me right now, you're a man or woman of God, the purpose of soapies, is to activate lust in your life, mm. right? That's why whoredom is the strong man over soapies. You know, uh, 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 I was chatting to someone, a, a Christian lady, and who's and you know, and and who says, well, you know, I'm a prophetess and I'm an intercessor and I pray for hours. I do this, I do that, and you know, mm. I preach the word and so on. And this Christian, uh, a lady, is hooked on to soapies, and I said. How does this work for you? Mm. Because you're watching the soapy, you're seeing a woman who's sleeping with a father or someone's father. Then later on, she's, she dumps him and sleeps with the son. Then she that dumps him son. and sleeps with the grandson, right? And you're a Christian woman, a woman of God. You're sitting and watching lust before your eyes. You're even commenting, well, I hope she gets caught for what she's doing. Well, I wonder who he's going to meet. <laughs> You're watching this filth on TV. It's feeding your spirit, and then you go out to preach the gospel, to preach the word. Amen? Now, that God didn't intend for you to, to stir up the lust inside you. He didn't intend for that to happen. He intended for you to speak the word in power and truth. So, uh, uh, <laughs> who is he? Who is he going to sleep with next? Who is she going to sleep with next? Mm. Filth. It's filth. All filth. And that's what soapies are about. There's no good godly soapy out there. Amen? <laughs> I know there was a Christian soapy some time ago, but it still was not godly. No. Amen? <laughs> Amen. You are getting, you are feeling what the person is feeling, the soapy, because you wanted them to connect and sleep with someone else. And that's what mm. movies do as well. When you meet movies, what's the next thing that happens when two people meet? They end up fornicating. And, and you cool with that, right? So how can you have the Spirit of God inside you and, and let Eros love be erupted and lust come out? You can't. Yes. Amen? So you've got to understand. Now, in many cases, because people are exposed to Hollywood, they watch so much of these bad movies. They, they watch so much of Hollywood uh, uh, and, and, and they watch uh, 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 pornography. They go to pornography websites. They're reading pornography magazines. They're into soapies. These things all come under whoredom. And what whoredom does is whoredom stares up lust inside you. Unknowingly, lust is stared up. So when you are sleeping, that lust is manifesting in your dreams. Mm -hmm. That lust is manifesting in your thoughts all the time. Right? Why? It's because you've exposed your spirit to lust. Yes. You've, you have arisen mm. eros love before, before it's, time. it's time. And that's what scripture says. Yeah. Do not do that before it's time. So when is the right time? Well, when you're married, right? <laughs> you're about to get married, that's fine. Right? You know, uh, uh, having physical feelings for someone is a requirement when you're married. It's, it's necessary when you're married. But it doesn't mean that's the only thing you must have. And if you don't have it, there's a problem here. Mm. Having it is important when you're married. But if you're not married, and, and especially if you are, you know, if, you, if you've got a long way to go before you're married, you should not be 
a rising eros love. The Bible yes. says, don't do it. If you do it, you're going to burn. And then you'd rather get married immediately than continue burning and yes. falling to sin. Right? And eros love is tormenting. It's, it yeah. torments you. Right. And it will drive you to do things you wouldn't do right. in your right mind. And here's something for a lot of people don't know. When you, when you activate, now eros love, before the time, brings lust. Yes. When a person suffers from lust, they suffer from another demonic condition. Anyone knows what it is? A person suffering from lust suffers from another demonic condition. Do you know? Anger. Very good. Anger. So anger and lust are connected. They're connecting. They are, they are, we, they are, we, we call them sister demons. Mm. They are connected. So when you see people with anger issues, the spirit of lust is always in the back that's affecting the spirit of anger. Amen. So just something for those yeah. of you who, who are studying demonology and, and understanding how deliverance ministry yeah. works. Amen. But we'll come to that on some other time. Let's stay here. So if you're married, Eros love is legal if you're married, right? You've got to have physical feelings to the person. And Eros love is not evil. It's not evil. But if it is awakened at the appropriate time, it's not evil. It's not evil. If it's awakened at the appropriate time, it's not evil. If it's awakened before the appropriate time, mm. it often leads to sin. It often leads to sin. You know, Jesus said something so powerful about Eros love. He said, if you look at a woman lustfully, mm. just look at her lustfully, that's Eros love, right? That's Eros love. If you look at her lustfully, you have already sinned. That's what yes. he said. You've already sinned. You've committed sin. You've actually your heart. committed what? Adultery. adultery. In You've your already heart. committed adultery. Because, well, well, how did that happen? Because you awoken Heros love before mm. its time. Mm. So go back and, you know, not everything in the world thinks, you know, because we have so much of peer pressure. Children are under pressure to sleep with one another. They're under pressure to, to, to fornicate in schools. Mm. They're under pressure from media, from friends to do the wrong things. And as a parent, you should be alert and aware and keep that relationship with your son and your daughter and that they, the doors are always open for them to come back and talk to you. The doors are open for you to interact. Uh, uh, they should be, you know, as your mom or dad, you should be their best friend. They should be able to connect to you and talk to you about anything all the time. And, 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 and also you should be alert all the time to the kind of friends that they're connected to because those friends will always have peer pressure on them. So... So, you know, you need to be more alert as a parent. You need to be praying all the time for your children as a parent. Amen. Now, Amen. we spoke about uh, Eros love, or Eros love, as some people say it. Mm. The correct, correct pronunciation is Eros. Eros. Right? The second love is filial love. Filial love, which is uh, a brotherly or a sisterly love, yes. right? It's, it's, the, it's the love we see in church. Amen. Or it's the love between friends, right? Mm -hmm. When you go to church, oh, I love you, sister so-and-so. I love you, brother so-and-so. And it's hug nothing wrong in hugging people in church. I'm not, I know the government doesn't want you to hug anyone at the moment, but, <laughs> but just remember, there's nothing wrong in hugging somebody in church. Amen? Amen. And just if you're hugging someone from the opposite sex, hug them appropriately, right? Uh, hug them appropriately. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing wrong in you hugging people, right? In fact, don't think so. I'm so cool. I don't hug anyone. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Your Bible says you must have love for your brother. Love your brother. Go and hug them. Amen. When you come to church, I tell people to hug. And I see some, some men. Oh, well, you know, we are men and, you know, we are tigers. Go and <laughs> hug. I tell them to go and hug. Or I get someone to hug them. Amen. Mm. Nothing wrong in loving people. Nothing wrong in hugging people. Amen. So Amen. that's filial love. The third type of love is called storge. Storge. And storge is yes. the affectionate family, family love. Family love. It's from like parent and child. Being a parent and a child. Your siblings, your family members. Family members, maybe your love for your grandfather, your grandmother. All that kind of love is storge. Right? Storge. So it's affectionate love within a family. Yes. And the fourth type of love that the Bible speaks about is agape love. All of us know this. Mm. It's the divine love. It's the God kind of love, which we're going to study right now. And we're going to see a derivation from agape that is so critical for a Christian to understand. So critical. Amen. Now, agape love is a love that God has for mankind. Okay? 
in general. You remember the famous scripture? Mm. Uh, some people have made it the center of the Bible. Uh, I'm not really sure if it is the center of the Bible, but it is a very important scripture. Uh, John 3, 16. Mm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Wow. wow. So God loved the world. Say it again. God loved the God loved world. the world. God still loves the world. That love that God has for the world, for those who are unsaved. Remember now, watch this, watch this. Let's go back again. John 3, 16. God loves who? The world. God loves who? The world. Who's the world? You and I. Right? But the world is everybody. Everyone. Everyone, right? Everyone. Everybody on the planet mm. is the world. Whether they are Christian or not, yes, it's the loves. world, right? And he loves them. He loves them. How does he love them? With agape love, a God kind of love. Amen? So God loves the world. Mm. He loves the people of different faiths. Yes. He loves the people in different countries. He loves the people in the darkest part of the earth. Yes. He loves the whole world. And he loves them with an agape love. Now, he doesn't, he's not the only one that has his love because God comes and lives inside you. So love comes inside you and you start to manifest the same love. Mm -hmm. right? In fact, he pours out his love inside us inside through us. the Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's what scripture says. So agape love. It's is, also used for the human response to this love and can be used for love shared and expressed between human beings. So in other words, we inherit agape love. So we are not born with agape love. No one is born with agape love. Mm. No one is born with agape love. But when you connect to God, you connect to God, He fills you with that love for people, for the world. Now, there are some people that have a love that's actually very close to that. They have a love that is uh, uh, for people, a uh, 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 brotherly love, which is called? Uh, phileo. Phileo, phileo, phileo love. love. And it's very close to an agape love. So these are people who, who have not, who are not born again, but they, but they do so much of good work for the needy, so mm -hmm. much of charity work, so much of help. They help the charity. They, they, they are people in needs and yes. so on. And, 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 and they give. And they, they give. Yes, they, they do. give, they give, they take care. Mm -hmm. That kind of love is, is, often, is often phileo love, right? So it's, it's a brotherly love. It's not agape love. Because agape love is different from filial love. So you can love people. You can do great things for them. But agape love is a completely different kind of love. Mm. So how would we classify agape love? We, do, we classify it in the life of Jesus. Right? Yes. And we see agape love. And, and, uh, and, and I'll come to a scripture in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, when the Bible says that where Jesus laid down his life, Yes. For those that he loves. Agape love is that kind of love where you're prepared to lay down your life for someone that you love. Amen. You're prepared to sacrifice your life for someone that you love. That's a God kind of love and agape yes. love. Right. So you love the world. You'll do lots of good deeds, lots of charity work mm. and, and really sacrifice a lot. But if somebody says, are you willing to die for this person? That is a completely different thing. Yes. Amen. Now, agape love is where you, you're prepared to sacrifice your life, give your life up for someone else. And in religions, there's many religions in the world, many religions. The only person, the only person mm. that has shown the world agape love is Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. Only Jesus Christ laid down his life for you and me. Mm. No one else does and no one else did. That scripture is so beautiful. It says, while we were yet sinners, right. while we were yet in sin, Christ died on the cross for us. Right. He gave us his life. So Jesus says to Peter in John 21, 15, read that to me. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me more than you love these others? In other words, Jesus was asking Peter, do you agapus me more than you love the others? So more than you... Phileo, the others. Yes. Do you agape me? Mm, do you agape so me? So do you love me with the God, the way I love I you? I love you. There's like two people in love. They say, I love you. And the other mm. person says, uh, I love you too. But do you love me the way I love you? <laughs> is that, that's what Jesus is saying here. Do you, uh, do you love me with the agape kind of love where you are, will be ready to lay down your life? Yes. 
for me. And actually, all of these apostles did that, right? Mm. Okay, John escaped, but but all of, but he was willing to as well. And it was love that caused him to escape. Yeah, and Peter was Peter, according to, to tradition, he was crucified, uh, crucified upside, upside down, down, upside down. In fact, when we were in Italy, we went to the spot mm. where 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 Peter was crucified. You can go to in Italy in yes. Rome. So he was crucified upside down. Upside down. And uh, and so he. Agape Jesus. He proved to Jesus, mm. I agape you, because he laid down his life yes. for Jesus. Amen. And uh, very, very powerful. <laughs> you know, there's, you know, sometimes you'll get even people that are in the ministry or people who claim to be men and women of God, they will have phileo love for people. But whether they have agape love, that's something completely different. Amen. Now, uh, uh, Matthew 5:43. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Amen. Mm. Now, watch this here. The love Jesus is speaking about here, when he says love your enemies, that is agape love. It cannot be eros love, right? <laughs> no, definitely Because not. There's no way you're going to have good feelings for your enemy, right? <laughs> like, come on. No one's going to say, I love my enemy. Oh, I love you. Let me just kiss you. Let me just hug you, enemy. <laughs> no, come on, right? Uh, you're definitely not going to have filius love, mm -mm. right? Or, or store J love, right, for your enemy. I mean, don't say, that's my brother. I love you as a brother. No. <laughs> you're not going to have that kind of love. But the one love you can have It's called agape love. Mm. And God calls us to agape our enemies. So agape love is the love that is beyond your feelings. Yes. <laughs> It's beyond your feelings. It's an act of will. It's beyond your feelings. It's an act of will. So maybe right now you're watching me and uh, someone has betrayed you. Maybe they've betrayed you in marriage. Maybe they betrayed you in a relationship. Maybe they betrayed you in business. And you are pretty angry with them. You, you're pretty upset with them right now because of what they did. The Bible says, hey, uh, well, I understand that you are angry, but I'm not asking you to eros that person. I'm not asking you to filio that person. Mm, I'm not asking you to store jade that person. I'm asking you to agape them. So go beyond the way you feel and do it as an act of will to still pray for them. Pray that God will bless them. Pray, pray that God will restore them. That's an act of will that comes from deep within you because God lives inside you. Agape. What an amazing, powerful teaching we had today. Amen. I wish somebody had told me what Hasid was when I was a baby Christian. There are so many things that God has done in my life because of our seed. And it's such an honor for me to teach you these things. If you miss any of our episodes, you can go to our YouTube channel and watch all the previous episodes. Get the full teaching on our YouTube channel. Also remember that on the TV broadcast, we only broadcast 29 minutes. A large part of the full teaching is only available on live stream or on our YouTube channel. So go there and get the full message. Amen. This is Pastor Silva Mudley. And this is Pastor Jesse Mudley. Reminding you that miracles are normal. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.